Hello, today I would like to show you quite interesting project. From some time I was looking for a way of getting CO2 in my lab. The same time I didn't want to have like a big industrial battle. I was looking for something small, something convenient and something that I can easily refill. And this is the answer. This is a soda stream CO2 bottle. You use this for a soda machine. There is a absolutely lot of places where you can refill them. This is how they are, how they looks like. So we've got a valve. This is an unregulated bottle. And if you would like to tap from that, you need a regulator. And this is something that I've got from China. Here is the regulator I've got. Here we've got the screw for adjusting the output pressure. Here we've got the outlet. You can put a hose or something else. And this is the inlet. And if you take a look at the user manual, this is what is intended to be used on. The small cylinder that you screw on the bottom. And it is of course not compatible with the soda stream bottles, but we've got a proper adapter. Here is the model number for the adapter. This is the thread of the soda stream bottle. This is the thread of the top part. And as you can see, the thread is quite interesting. There is a like a Teflon seal. Here is the spike that is going to open the valve. This is the valve. If you press it, you are going to release the CO2. So all those components are critical. And we are going to put it together. This part does not need a lot of force because on the back you've got a rubber seal. I would advise adding a Loctite just to prevent the thread from undoing by the accident. But just for the sake of this video, I'm going to bypass that and we are not going to wait for cure it. Hand down, hand tight is going to be more than enough because of the seal. And now I'm going to just put my safety glasses and we are going to screw the regulator on top of the bottle. We are going to see and hear some of the release, but it is 100% uh, okay. We just have to do it quickly. Just like that. Now we can tight it a little bit. Just like that. And we are ready to go. You might be tempted to get a regulator that have a two pressure indicators, but absolutely don't fall into it. That's because CO2 is in form of a liquid and you are only pulling a gas fraction. So the liquid is evaporating. We've got a top gas part and it's going into the regulator and it's going to have a constantly exactly the same pressure. If you are going to pull the gas, more will change from liquid to gas and until it's going to be totally empty, the pressure is going to be exactly the same. Plus minus then will be a difference between of a temp if the bottle is going to be 
colder, then the pressure will go down. But in general, there is no need for a second pressure indicator on the primary side. And you might get yourself a question how to know how much CO2 do you have inside your bottle. And here you can see on the bottle you've got a weight. You are going to weight the bottle without the regulator. You are going to take out the weight from your reading and you've got a weight of the CO2 inside. You are basically weighing down your cylinder. Let's try our regulator. Here I've got a glove. I'm going to put it like this and we can try to refill it by increasing the pressure. And as you can see, it's working absolutely perfect. So let's see this once again. As you can see, everything is working perfect. We've got extremely nice setup, very nice, very convenient, easy to store. I would like to do a couple of experiments and one of them is welding plastic using those rods and the hot air gun. But I was having a problem that while welding the plastic that way, it was extremely smoking and it was burning. So my assumption is that if I'm going to use a CO2 as a shielding gas, we are going to remove the oxygen and that should make it nice and much cleaner. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you find that interesting. See you next time and bye bye.